This video is mainly focused on body scrubs. Although all this information can also be used for a facial scrub. And when it comes to scrubs, there really is a large range of different kinds you can make. Body scrubs, face scrubs, foot scrubs, lip scrubs. There's so many possibilities and there's so many different types of formulations you can make. But typically there are certain types of scrub formulations that are more commonly used for the feet or for the body or for the lips or for the face. And today we're just focusing on body scrubs, even though all this information can be used for maybe a foot scrub or a facial scrub. So with all that said, let's just get into it. So there's two different kinds of body scrubs you can make, anhydrous and aqueous. Anhydrous means it is oil-based, contains only oil-soluble ingredients, and aqueous is water-based, contains water-soluble ingredients, but can also contain oil-soluble ingredients as well. First, I want to just focus on anhydrous body scrubs. So the most basic body scrub recipe you can make is just some oil and some sugar. You could also use salt, but I personally don't like salt scrubs because they do burn my skin if I have a cut or anything. Also, salt is more abrasive than sugar, so salt is great to use for a foot scrub. So you can make this extremely simple body scrub by mixing whatever ratio of sugar to whatever ratio of oil you prefer. Here's the formula that I like to use. 20% oil, 80% sugar. And you can use any kind of oil you would like. So do you know how to convert a formula to a recipe? First, you need to decide how much you wanna make. If you wanna make a 250 gram batch of the scrub, then that is called your batch size. Your batch size is how much you wanna make. So our batch size is 250 grams for this hypothetical recipe. So now we need to figure out what 20% and 80% of 250 is. So we can create our recipe. So you can use a formula calculator, which I'll link to one down below, or you could just do the math. To find what 80% of 250 is, start by moving the decimal space up two spaces. So now you have 0.80. Multiply 0.80 by 250, which this equals 200. That means you need 200 grams of sugar for your recipe. Now move the decimal up two spaces in 20. Now you have 0.20. Multiply 0.20 by 250, which equals 50. You could also literally just Google what is 80% of 250, but I just wanted to let you know how to do the math just in case. So now you know you need 200 grams of sugar and 50 grams of oil. You can check your work by adding up all the grams to make sure it equals your batch size, which our batch size is 250 grams. Now here's something to keep in mind. I've mentioned in the past that anhydrous formulations don't need a preservative, which they don't because they don't contain water. But body scrubs will come into contact with water because you're taking them into the shower with you. So if you do wanna avoid using a preservative in your body scrub, that means you can't take it into the shower with you. Instead, scoop out the amount of scrub that you wanna use and put it in a bowl and take that into the shower with you so no water gets into your actual container of body scrub. If you wanna add a preservative into your scrub, which I do highly recommend you doing, you need to make sure you're using an oil-soluble, broad-spectrum preservative. I recommend Optifin or Phenonip. Phenonip is a paraben, and I know a lot of people like to avoid parabens, so Optifin is probably a better choice. Make sure it is Optifin, not Optifin Plus. And I do have a video all about preservatives. It's part of this Formulating for Beginner series. I'll link it down below along with the playlist for all of these videos in the series, which I highly recommend going back and watching all of them because if you understand all the information I cover before this video, this video will make more sense. So here's a list of other ingredients you can add into your very basic body scrub to make it not so basic. Vitamin E. Um, this is an antioxidant. This will help keep your oils from going rancid. It's not a preservative, but it does keep the oils in your formulation more fresh and it'll make them last longer. But it's not a preservative, so it won't keep your product from molding if water gets in your body scrub. You could also use other exfoliants like coffee grounds, jojoba pearls, strawberry seeds, red raspberry seeds, cranberry seeds, walnut shell powder, Hoaba castor beads, avocado powder, bamboo stem powder, and I'm sure there's a lot more. These are just the ones that I randomly thought of. Um, you can use different colorings like mica, iron oxides, 
ultramarines, and lake dyes. And typically you'll find iron oxides and ultramarines in mica powder. You can use fragrance oils, essential oils, and scented extract. And then you can also use clays. I've never actually used a clay in a scrub, so I'm not really sure how it reacts in a scrub, but I have seen a lot of scrub formulations contain clays. I should really try that out sometime. Let me know if you have experience with that and how you like using clays and scrubs. So here's a formula for a more fun, simple body scrub. So first I just start with the oil, and then I add in the preservative, and then the fragrance or essential oil, whatever one you wanna use. And then I add in the vitamin E, the mica powder, and then I mix in the mica powder. And then I add in the sugar, mix it all up, and then add in the seeds. And here's the final recipe for this scrub. So you just jar it up, and there you go. That's your more fun and creative basic body scrub. Emulsified body scrubs. What makes emulsified scrubs different from the basic body scrub is that you have to melt down the ingredients and mix them up and let them re-solidify. And then add in your exfoliants. The benefits of an emulsified scrub is that you're able to use a larger variety of ingredients. The scrubs are easier to hold in your hands, they're less greasy and less likely to leak during shipping. You can also get more creative since you have the ability to use a wider variety of ingredients. Any oil soluble ingredients like oils, butters, emollient esters, waxes, fatty acids, fatty alcohols, oil soluble extracts, and any other oil soluble ingredient. There are so many out there. You can use different exfoliants. You can use vitamin E, like I mentioned earlier, fragrance or essential oil or scented extracts, all the colors that I mentioned earlier, and then obviously preservatives. Optifin and Phenonip, any oil soluble broad spectrum preservative. So here's a really simple formula for an emulsified scrub. 10% emulsifying wax. You could use Read Emuls SCG, Elevum 1000, or any other waxy emulsifier. 3% stearic acid. You could use cetyl alcohol, satiral alcohol, batinol alcohol, or any other fatty acid or fatty alcohol. 34% oil. Any oil works fine. And then the cooldown phase, 1.5% uh, Optifin, 0.5% vitamin E, 1% fragrance, and 50% sugar. And once everything's mixed together and combined, you won't have the full viscosity of your scrub until the next day. After about 24 hours, your scrub will be like the, t the actual hardness. It'll probably be every single day. And obviously all these percentages are kind of personal preference if you want your scrub to be softer lower the percentage of the waxy emulsifier and the hardener, which in this case is the stearic acid, or if you want your scrub to be harder, increase the percentages of those two items. Um, whatever you wanna do, experiment with different percentages and see what you like. So here's that formula transitioned into a recipe for a 150 gram batch. So let's go ahead and make it. So I'm gonna start out with the emulsifying wax and F and then add in the stearic acid and then the oil and then place it in a water bath. This is just a pan filled with about an inch of water and I just place the bowl in and let everything melt. And then I just mix it up with my hand mixer. And then you can let it cool by either putting it in the refrigerator or just letting it sit and mix it up periodically as it cools down. And then you'll be left with a consistency kind of like this, depending on what temperature it's at. So once it's under 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you can add in the cool down ingredients. So I'm gonna start with the vitamin E and then the preservative, the fragrance, mix everything together, add in the mica powder, mix it in, and then add in the sugar. And it mix everything up, and there you go. Add it into whatever jar you prefer, and then you'll have the final viscosity in about 24 hours. Now let's make a more advanced emulsified body scrub. Here's a formulation for a blue raspberry smoothie scrub. And obviously all these ingredients are interchangeable. You can use a different butter than mango butter. You can change out the Rita Emuls or the Bahnol alcohol for different hardeners. You can use whatever oil you want, whatever fragrance you want. You don't need to use the blueberry seeds or the sugar. You can use salt or any other exfoliants. And here's the formulation transitioned into a recipe for a 150 gram batch. So let's go ahead and make it. So I'm gonna start with the Rita Mulls SCG and then the Behanol alcohol, the mango butter, and then the oil. Again, just placing it in a water bath and letting everything melt. Give it a quick mix once everything's melted, place it in the refrigerator or just let it set at room temperature and let it harden and mix it up. Add in the cool down ingredients. I'm gonna start with the vitamin E 
And then the preservative, the fragrance, which I'm actually using flavor oil here, but flavor oils can be used as fragrance as well. The mica powder, mix everything together. Then add in the sugar. And then I like to mix the sugar in first before adding in the seeds. Mix everything together one last time, and there you go. That's how it looks. And jar it up in whatever container works for you. And there you go. You'll have the final viscosity in about 24 hours. That's how every emulsified scrub is. I hope that was a good introduction to body scrubs for you guys. Like I said at the beginning, you can use these recipes as facial scrubs but some people might find them to be a bit too greasy or oily for the face. It just depends on your personal preference and your skin type. And like I said, there's just so many different kinds of scrubs you can make, so it's really hard to cover all the information in one video. But this is just the general basic types of body scrubs that people make and people use. And like I said at the beginning, there are anhydrous and aqueous body scrubs. And aqueous, scrubs can be used on the body like there are aqueous body scrubs formulations and products out there but typically aqueous scrubs are more likely going to be facial scrubs because they do include like more expensive ingredients and when it comes to our body we're not quite as picky with like texture and sensory feel as we are on our face so we're more likely going to be using just a basic like oil-based body scrub on our body and then an anhydrous, less greasy uh, type of scrub on our face. For the most part, this isn't the case for everyone and everything. But you'll notice when you like Google facial scrubs, most likely they're going to be aqueous based scrubs. And when you Google body scrubs, most of those types of scrubs on the market are going to be anhydrous. This isn't always the case, keep that in mind. This is just generally what I see. And then when it comes to lip scrubs, those are typically always anhydrous. I've never seen one that's aqueous, but I'm sure there are aqueous lip scrubs out there. And then when it comes to foot scrubs, those are generally mostly always anhydrous from what I've seen. They're typically salt-based because they are the most abrasive as opposed to sugar, but not always. There are sugar foot scrubs as well. Oh, and also there's foaming scrubs too, like whipped foaming scrubs. I've made those on my channel. Also, one more thing I want to say before we go is that sugar and salt can't be used in aqueous formulations because salt and sugar dissolve in water. So if you put salt or sugar in a formulation that contains water, it will cause the sugar and salt to dissolve over time. And you'll notice your formulation will get like clumps of sugar in it. I've never made really a salt scrub. So I don't really know how salt reacts, but I do know sugar will like cause these clumps in your scrubs if you have water in it because it's being dissolved and it's clumping together. So that's why you'll never see salt or sugar in aqueous formulation. So give this video a thumbs up if you want to see another video like this, but about like foaming scrubs or aqueous scrubs or lip scrubs or something. Let me know down in the comments which kind you want to see. And be sure to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you're notified next time I upload so you don't miss a video because literally every one of my videos have so much information. And if you miss one, you're missing on valuable information that you could be using. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll talk to you guys next time. Later.